We are painting a pine tree in Chinese brush painting, spontaneous style, also known as Shei Yi. Um, here, before I've started, I've already uh, set aside uh, black ink, sumi ink, and also diluted ink, which reads as a medium gray. It's ink mixed with water. And I'm using a combination brush, which means it has hard and soft bristles. Um, I'm using a bone stroke, which means I'm going with firm pressure from the beginning to the end in a mopping fashion. I'm not, you know, sort of landing and taking off in a really light way. I'm, I'm giving a lot of definition to the beginning and the end, and I'm going for a lot of contrast in all of the different parts of the stroke because we're doing the trunk and we're doing the twigs. We're doing like branches. Um, the, the pine tree, all trees really are symbols of endurance and longevity. So we want to see a lot of contrast here. We want to see, uh, age, we, we want contrast in these lines. Uh, we want personality. No two trees are the same. I'm giving them some texture. I'm giving them a little bit of bark. Um, I want a little bit of difference in the tones of grays. And I want a little bit of difference in the line. And as I'm going, you know, down each branch, uh, it gets a little bit narrower um, but you never see a zigzag, you know, um, right here, you see, I have gone in with some actual black ink. I'm giving just some contrast. Um, I'm trying to balance what's going to come next. Cause there's going to be, you know, a lot of pine needles and what we call happy dots, you know, wherever there's a big expanse of line, um, there's always a lot of knots on pine trees or, you know, just places, you know, that might be open or, you know, you know kind of do what you want. But um, <clears throat> let's see right here. Yeah, we're just going in and having a little fun. Um, next, what I've done is I'm taking some vermilion and also brown, which is a mixture of vermilion, orange, and, and ink, and um, adding a little bit of color. Not everywhere. We're not going for anything super realistic, um, but we're just adding color on the sides of the trunk. Not really on the middle. We're, we're not doing a lot on the middle because that's where, on any tree, you would get your highlight for the most part. Um, we're giving it a little color and you know, a personality. Um, you feel free to do what you want right here. All right. Now I'm switching to the mountain horse brush. This is a line brush. It has harder bristles. Um, it doesn't have to be a mountain horse brush, but what we're doing is the blade stroke. So you are doing basically lines and I'm using light green, dark green, and also ink uh, and just lines that come together in pretty much a fan shape. And they're going to come together in groups in different spots uh, on these branches. <clears throat> and, you know, at your discretion, you, you try to keep, keep some white space in there. And also keep some highlights and some energy in there. So, you know, this, um, this recording of the painting is sped up a bit. But not so much that you can't really tell what's going on. Um, I tried to take the the paint mixing parts out. Uh, what I just did right there was I added a few more dots um, just for some more contrast. And I'm going back in because I mixed another green. I just wanted a different 
little bit more ochre for some more piney color. Um, <clears throat> but you can tell that I'm really not so much interested in, you know, a photo realism. A lot of times I'll paint from a photo that I've taken on my phone, um, and it'll come out looking differently depending on my mood, <laughs> um, five or six times, or I can push it in different ways, five, 10, 20 different ways, whatever I want. Um, the more you do the spontaneous style of painting, the more you will realize that um, this is very close to what the Impressionists were doing. Um, and you'll feel a lot like an Impressionistic painter. Um, and I think that's the beauty of it. Uh, that's the fun in it. But uh, it does require a lot of practice. Sometimes, even like for me, it's really easy to go <laughs> overboard. Um, I see a lot of places in this in the editing that I, I did go overboard and I'll probably try to do it again or I don't know, who knows, I'll, maybe I'll move on. So from here on out, we're going to try to adjust to what we've done up there and we're going to come down and we're just going to keep going where we think it's appropriate. Um, we're going to do lively lines. We're going to try not to fill it up too much. And what you have to keep in mind is that when it dries, it's not going to look exactly the same. The rice paper is going to cause it to bleed. This paper is um, it's heavily sized. So it's, it doesn't bleed a whole lot, but you can see the top is, is starting to bleed a little bit. And I always think of this paper as so sized that it really doesn't bleed, but it, it does. So, um, you know, you have to keep that in mind. I gave this tree a lot of needles. Um, I had a lot on my mind. <laughs> I wanted to make it look really alive. I didn't want it to make it look like it had lost a lot of needles, just you know, call it what's going on in the world. But um, I had a lot of fun with it. And I hope this is enough information to give you guys to start to work on it. It doesn't require a whole lot of colors. It doesn't require, honestly, a lot of skill to get started because pine trees come in all shapes and sizes. This is a yellow mountain pine. They kind of will go to any shape or or they'll, they'll grow in a lot of shapes. Um, my teacher loves anything to do with yellow mountain. <laughs> and we, we do a lot of subjects with, uh, regarding yellow mountain. Um, sometime I'd, I'd really love to visit there. Uh, it's a really, uh, I don't know if holy is an imp appropriate word, but it's, it's a really important, um, site, especially for, for painters in China. So, um, anyway, I mean, I'm filling in here and I don't think I mentioned yet that I'm, I'm making these, these shapes generally in a fan shape. Um, first, you know, first in a dark color and then it goes out in a lighter color. Um, in Chinese painting, we're always doing what's in front first, uh, it's actually a little bit unusual in the way we paint um, to do the trunk of the tree first uh, for me. But um, you can see that I, I, I start almost with a dark color and then I come out with the light color and then I anchor it a little bit with the dark color just for a little bit more contrast um, with these bundles of leaves is how I'm operating.
So here, um, in the end, I just start to give it more contrast. And right now, I'm just um, like, let's make it more lively. Okay, so I want to look work a little bit more on the roots. I want the mist, not the mist, the the roots to fade into the bottom a little bit. I want it to be anchored with some more needles. I want it to be a little bit obscure. Like, is this the bottom of a tree or is there a bush down there? I don't know, but I want it to be very clear that this tree is part of something and this something is part of the tree and the roots are gonna hold. Um, that was my thinking. So that's why I put this extra one down there. And I'm gonna, after that, I'm gonna start extending the roots because it occurred to me while I was painting, again, with everything that's going on right now, I've been in quarantine for a while. <laughs> My area has been quarantined. So um, the roots became very important to me. Uh, normally, I think that with the Chinese style, that simplicity would be better. But at this point, the pine needles, like a lot of green, and some roots. I think the roots are very, very important. So that's where, uh, you know, your own personality and your own point of view comes in. And it's very important. Like every, every, every point of view is important in art. Um, so that's what I'm doing here at the last. Okay, so we're about to wrap it up. Um, I hope that this helps you with your own art. I hope that this was entertaining for you. Um, I'm definitely going to try to put a lot more videos up here. So, you know, definitely subscribe if you liked it and give me feedback on what worked for you and what didn't. Um, I'd love to see what you create. Okay. Thanks a lot.